Ladies and gentlemen, let's get it. Welcome to the bullpen. All right, we have in the bullpen, Mr. Donald Kimball, commentator, Young Voices and Communications Manager, Washington Policy Center, very accomplished young man. Good to have you on the show, how are you? I'm well, thanks so much for having me, it's a pleasure to be with you. Pleasure's mine. Uh, we're going to chop it up about social media, this proclamation that somehow conservatives um, are being targeted on social media and the reality of certain lawsuits that have gone forth, basically saying social media should not really regulate people on the platform. Everything should be free. I don't want to uh, presume what you know, believe about this issue. So I will allow you to tell us and then opine. Of course. Well, thanks again for having me. It's one of those issues where a lot of the time people can dismiss the idea of conservative censorship because it's not. 100% total, right? You might say there are conservative voices being censored. Uh, and the response might be something along the lines of, well, okay, well, how can we still see big outlets like maybe like Ben Shapiro, The Daily Wire, or other prominent conservative voices? They, they're still out there. So there's not really censorship going on. But what we've actually seen is that there has been targeted uh, censorship through social media companies, but it's done by pressure from the government uh, and the White House, different departments, Department of Homeland Security, thing, uh, different institutions have gone out. And, and I would like to say that while most of the voices maybe have a conservative bent, I, I think it's a little bit more about trying to censor voices that dissent with whatever the powerful narrative uh, needs to be for the, the people in power, I should say. Uh, so I think you know it, it's it's a shorthand to say conservative voices are being censored, but I would say it's it's more about voices of dissent that challenge the narrative that uh, the government usually wants to have um, as a baseline. And we've seen multiple examples of that. You know, I concur with the uh, challenging of narrative dynamic uh, because I do believe that individuals who are presenting a point of view, even if it is adverse to the normative point of view, should be able to have their voices heard, period. But Republicans or conservatives, when they decide to make issue with being banned from a platform, when you look at the but for cause of why they did so or why they banned them, it's a legitimate reason. And typically it's a reason codified in the very contract you sign before you are allowed to engage on the social media platform. So let me ask the question in a, in a more broader sense. Do you believe that these platforms should be completely absent of regulation from the private um, company itself? Well, <clears throat> what, what I would say is when you're talking about the terms of service agreement that you know you sign up for an account, you agree to these terms of service. What we've actually seen from different things like the Twitter files or even recently uh, Michael Schellenberger um, had testified before Congress with other leaked documents. You've seen this in the Missouri v. Biden case that's going on about four months ago. They they uh, agreed to to rule this on this. You've seen that what initially happened is the White House or the FBI, um, different national departments of our government have come to these social media companies and pointed out tweets or um, posts or groups they don't like. And initially, there actually was pushback from these companies saying, actually, this doesn't violate our terms of service. So we're not going to. But what ended up happening then is you had prominent individuals in the government threatening of sorts to these companies to change their terms of service. And so then the companies did go in and manually change their terms of service so that then they could go back and censor a lot of this content. So, so I think it's a little bit of a false you know, choice to say, Either they have to have no regulation or uh, the government stays or uh, has total control. Because I think what's actually happening is the government is pressuring these companies to change their standard. Well, well, Donald, so Donald the, yeah, allow, me, allow me to insert this because we have limited time. I do want to know your position on the idea of deregulation because that's an important dynamic of our debate. Do you believe that these uh, social media outlets should engage in uh, unregulated uh, content? Or should they regulate the platform and just do it in a different way? Yeah, I, I think a private company has it, its own right to regulate its own content and to set those standards. I think that that right does exist. I think the problem, though, is the government coming in and pressuring these companies to take a certain stance. I think that's where you get into some of the line of the First Amendment. So okay. the companies are protected. And, that, by and, and sir, that I agree with. 
So if the government, and let's utilize your um, hypothetical because we don't have any proclamation on the legal record. But let's utilize your hypothetical as fact, let's say it's fact, that the government is coming in, uh, utilizing their power to pressure speech, even if it's a private company. Well, that is wrong, and that's what DeSantis did against Disney. That's wrong, you're utilizing legislation or government in order to penalize someone because you don't like what they're saying. But remember, in order for that to be an actionable claim, Disney had to say it. Disney had to say, this is what the government is doing to us. And we are filing suit, enforcing our First Amendment right. So while they do have that right, it is their right. It's not my right, and it's not your right, so they have to enforce it. Why is it that a company like Disney will enforce this right? But you have not seen that same enforcement from companies that are more powerful than Disney, if this is in fact how the government is starting to, let's just say, manipulate the powers that be. Uh, you know, it's hard to speculate on the motives of, of the big companies, but I would argue that pre Elon's takeover, in particular with Twitter, that was a company that was very willing to go along with a lot of the narratives that the government wanted. And I think that you can look at a lot of the leaked emails that that do confirm this White House uh, collusion of sorts, if you want to call yeah, it that. Yeah, but that's different. That's different now. Let's oh. talk about let's talk about that. Collusion, uh, coordination, a private company, as you have just laid out on the show, a private company has the right of regulation. They have the right of MOU contracts, whatever association or partnership they choose to have, they can have that. You have private public partnerships all over the place. The NFL in many ways is a private public partnerships in some respect, given the stadium dynamics and city governments and state governments that are involved. We don't say, well, that partnership is somehow um, adversarial to the sentiment of the corporation or no, the corporation gets to choose it. And if we don't want the corporation engaging in that kind of behavior, we as a consumer, as customers, we can decide to economically disengage from that company. So my point to you is, there's a conflation here of the terminology collusion and then force. Collusion means that they are in cahoots, meaning the company is saying yes to the influence. Uh, force would mean the company is saying no, but the government is threatening them and giving them no other choice. So which one is it? Well, I, th I think that, that will be determined largely by the Missouri v. Biden case that will yeah. be held out. I, I think there's pretty ample evidence to suggest that it is it is a thinly veiled threat through a lot of the communications that have been issued. And there have been rulings against that, that the government can't abridge the First Amendment through private actors uh, if it's the government's will through this force. So I think that you're going to see that these threats, again, the government is the, the biggest monopoly on force that we have in society, realistically speaking. And so when they come to a private company like Twitter or Facebook and they tell them, we take a look at these accounts, we want you to censor them, we want you to change your terms of service, uh, it's very... It's very hard to say no. So Disney said no, and, and that's great. But the federal government is also a much bigger institution than the state of Florida, for instance. Okay. And you don't you don't suggest that it should be completely deregulated, even in a more moderate system. You don't want complete deregulation, right? You know, again, it, it, if it's a private uh, company, I think that they have the right to do what it is. I, I would highly promote a culture of free speech. I think that companies should be more willing to let voices of dissent exist because mm -hmm. as we've seen with things from COVID to um, the Hunter Biden laptop story, things that often were said, this is misinformation, this is false, later do turn out to be true. I don't think anyone has a monopoly on the truth. And so I would, even if it's a private company's right to censor and moderate things, I would encourage companies and our culture in the US to be very open to more speech, not less. Yeah, and I concur with that uh, final point. And I'm going to give you some stats as to where the pushback, much of it is coming from. 98% of American parents believe that social media platforms are dangerous and anyone under 18 should get some type of parental uh, permission. More than two thirds of parents believe that children under 18 need more legislative protection against Social media, 89% of parents uh, would like a law that would require children to obtain uh, permission from the parents before getting on social media. 91% of parents support uh, prohibiting um, social media apps 
et cetera, et cetera. So you got a lot of your pushback of de deregulation from there. And I got to tell you, I get the point, right? So the point is, you have this massive platform that children are on. I don't want my daughter exposed to people saying the N word without any pushback. And then the very people, the same people who say that this should be a free speech uh, dynamic like Truth Social, uh, I lasted on Truth Social for five minutes uh, before they kicked me off. Uh, and I said nothing that was controversial. It was just because of who I am. Uh, so the same people that are launching the uh, debate, right, and going and actually filing court cases are the same people engaged in the same level of uh, activity of silence and others who are not in agreement with them. Yeah, but my only response to that would be the St. Augustine quote, which is never judge a philosophy by its abuse. And <laughs> so I would strongly encourage, you know, that's really rotten behavior. And I don't support that either. I think that yeah. that's one of the problems sometimes with the conservative side is they'll say things like we need smaller government. And then when they get in power, they don't make it smaller because they want to punish the people that they view as, as harming them. So I don't like the censorship of conservative voices. I do think, again, it's more about disrupting the narrative. They don't want that to happen. Uh, but I would also say that once you, when you create your own platform and you want it to be a free speech platform, it should be a free speech platform. And you shouldn't silence or kick, kick someone like yourself off just because of uh, dissenting views either. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, listen, man, I mean, I want dissenting voices. So I entertain the conservative point of view on damn near every show. So I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely.